don't usually reveal how I feel about a product when I'm reviewing them until nearly the end of the video, but sometimes I am so floored by a product that it just can't wait. And I am floored by the Tascam DR10L Pro. It's a lav mic and portable recorder system with 32-bit float. Right now you're hearing my usual reasonably expensive signal chain of a tube condenser mic, which I've got hidden here. And that's going through a channel strip with an EQ and compressor. Sounds great, I love it, it sounds fat and rich. But here's the thing, I am already starting to feel bad because I just lied. You are hearing the Tascam DR10L Pro and how incredible does this sound? I'll tell you what, I'll switch over to my normal mic now and this is what it sounds like just in the room with my normal processing. And I think the Tascam sounds incredible and this is coming from someone who generally doesn't really like the sound of lav mics. As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip around to the bits you want, no trouble. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers and it would really make my day if you could just take a second to go down and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It really just helps me out, helps the channel and I appreciate it. I thank you in advance. This is not sponsored content in any way. I bought this DR10L Pro with my own money and uh, Tascam don't know that I'm making it. However, these videos are made possible by my Patreon backers, if that's of any interest. The way that works is any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel, I buy gear, review it, and then give the gear to my backers, so it's kind of win-win, really. If that's of interest, do check it out, it's all below. Onward. Kicking off with the features, and rather than thinking of the DR10L Pro as a lav mic that has a receiver that just happens to have internal recording, we should think of it as being a very capable portable recorder first that happens to come with a really good quality lav mic. We will talk about all the other features you get with this, but first let me show you what you get in the box. And this unassuming box is what you get when you order the Tascam DR10L Pro. And I saw the image on the front and was shocked when it said actual size, what? And then inside we have the clip so you can clip it to your belt. And in some kind of force field, we have the lav mic itself with the various bits that come with it. The manual and bear in mind, you do get Isotope Essentials Edition with this, which is handy to have. And the unit itself, and it's tiny. And I can confirm, yep, it is indeed the actual size. And that's basically it, it's really simple. I wanna try this out now. Of course, one of the big features of the DR10L Pro is the fact that it records in 32-bit floating point. And uh, there, are, there are numerous products now that can do this, but it just can't be understated how incredible this feature is. I've done a whole video about 32-bit float called What is 32-bit Float? I thought that was a good name for the video which I recommend you watch. But just to give you the skinny, versus 16 and 24 bit, the increase in dynamic range is so profound that it becomes less about the ones and zeros that the bit depth gives you, and more about the physical limitations of your signal chain, the preamps, the self noise of your microphone, and that kind of thing. So 32 bit float and 48 kilohertz are the default bit depths and sample rates, although there are also options to shoot in 16-bit and 24-bit if you want that. Uh, and of course, sample rate, you can go to 44.1 kilohertz. There's also the option to record in compressed MP3 mode, but for heaven's sake, don't. Something else to consider with the DR10L Pro is that with other wireless uh, systems, lav systems, often they'll go you know, straight to, to the receiver and then into your camera via the frankly crappy preamps and digital to analog converters. With the DR10L Pro, I know that the preamps and the AD conversion is just so far ahead of what you get in a typical camera body. And you know what, I've always been an advocate of getting your audio off camera because inevitably the quality just skyrockets. As this is a portable recorder first, it should go without saying that it has storage. However, it's not one of these units that has a set amount of built-in storage. You will need to add your own micro SD card. Personally, I see this as a big pro because micro SD cards, so many video and audio guys will already own them. That's a big pro. They're also inexpensive, and it means that your whole setup is expandable. The DR10L Pro, once recording, also saves your audio files every 20 seconds, so if anything happens, 
if you lose power, anything like that, you've got you know, really up to date version of the recording and you won't be losing loads. As for battery life, it's huge. You get a minimum of 24.5 hours of battery life on just two lithium AAA batteries. That's quite a bit longer than all of the alternatives I mentioned later in this video and they all state the max battery life, including using battery cases. So basically not accounting for the charging time of the transmitters. The DR10L Pro is 24 plus hours constant use, which to me makes charging cases seem irrelevant. You don't get noise cancellation, but to be honest, I can't stand the sound of noise cancellation. I don't think it sounds professional in any kind of way. It also, it's not wireless, obviously, but then, you know, it's off camera. It doesn't need to be wireless. And the other thing I'll note is it doesn't come with any kind of case, which I admit might have been nice. However, when you zoom out and really look at the features, to me, the heart of the DR10L Pro is its reliability. You don't need to worry about connectivity. You don't need to worry about clipping your audio, losing your files or running out of power. It just does the thing politely and efficiently like having your own private uh, audio butler. Moving on to the build quality, and I'd say it's so typically Tascan. Not especially pretty or flashy, but solid enough and very utilitarian. And I really mean that as a compliment. It's just so form follows function, and I appreciate that. A lot of the alternatives on the market seem to put more, arguably, too much emphasis on appearance. You get a stereo mini jack for monitoring, a USB-C port for data transfer, which is handy. The lav mic that comes with the DR10L Pro is the excellent TM10L and costs £64 if purchased separately and in my opinion is worth every penny of that. So really the only thing to note there is it just doesn't come with any kind of case to keep it in and it would have been nice but to be honest I like these uh, I like these wraps that you get from Tenba. You can just chuck anything in it, you know, camera bodies, lenses. I just use this kind of thing for everything. I'll, I'll link them. Next onto the user experience and user interface side of things, and I'll keep it simple. The user interface is really just a uh, basic, simple, bright, clear, easy to navigate. Overall, I'd say the operation of this isn't exactly slick. But if you have any experience with recording audio, you're gonna be fine, and this will likely be a no manual product for you. Let's hear it now, shall we? So this is what the DR10 Pro sounds like in the most discreet way of positioning this on, on a subject, and that is taped to my chest underneath my T-shirt so it's not visible. And I like center chest uh, as a good position. However, when it comes to lav audio, I always prefer the way it sounds once you do some good processing, and I have a tip that is just mind blowing and I, I think everyone should be using. And um, you know what, I'm gonna jump into Logic and show you how to do that. And I'm gonna show you this clip again. So this is, you know, the before and then I'll play it um, with the processing to see what you think. I'm in Logic, my digital audio workstation of choice. These plugins that I'm gonna be using, there will be equivalent versions in all of the equivalent DAWs. And I just want to quick fire through them because I have done a whole video dedicated to this technique. And really it just boils down to one of these plugins. So let's crack on. I've added an EQ where I'm just cutting the sub bass frequencies. And then I add a de and then I add gentle compression. And then this is the key plugin and it's called Match EQ. And with this, you can learn the frequency response of your current track and then drop in a reference track I like to use one where I've used my expensive vocal chain with my nice condenser mic going through my channel strip. The plugin will then analyze and compare the two and then create a custom EQ curve to make your original audio sound more like your reference audio. You can play with how extreme the effect is, but this is just incredible. Now, one thing to note with this Tascam system, it just sounds so good without any processing that this is just one case where you may not even need to use it, but I tried this using Hollyland's Lark M2. I tried it using Godox's Magic X-T1 wireless mic and this technique transformed both of them so they sounded so much more like my lovely condenser mic audio. Let's now hear the difference this makes with the Tuscan DR10L Pro. As I said it's subtle after all the more similar the two sources are the less change there will be but I still believe it's an improvement. 
a tip that is just mind-blowing and I, I think everyone should be using and um, you know what I'm going to jump into logic and show you how to do that and I'm going to show you a tip that is just mind-blowing and I, I think everyone should be using and um, you know what I'm going to jump into logic and show you how to do that and I'm going to show you this clip again so this is so where the hell am I um, I'm here all the way in the distance and um, that's the cool thing about this isn't it doesn't matter it's not you know it doesn't matter that it's not wireless I could be the other side of the lake if you had a long enough lens and uh, probably seem like a madman now because I can't tell that I'm mucked up as for the value for money and alternative side of things there are quite a few other kind of wireless options on the on the market which have 32-bit uh, recording as well so let's check them out now and bear in mind these are all going to be two channel systems so just you know keep that in mind first up we have probably the market leader and that's Rode's wireless pro it does cost quite a bit more than two of the dr10l pros at the time of filming it's got good features i've owned some of the previous wireless offerings from Rode, and then we have the hollyland lark max which is very well priced for a two channel system i reviewed their lark m2 earlier this year and really liked it so it's likely a very good system and then we have the DJI Mic 2, which people seem to really like as well. I've never had a chance to try this one, but I'm sure it works well. Now, those are all really good options. They all have 32-bit float. They all have internal storage. I think of those ones, I would personally pick the Hollyland because of the value and the DJI, because just because I've heard lots of good things about it. I, I don't think I could buy the Rode personally, and that's only because I find the transmitters to be kind of absurdly sized and weighted. I mean, come on, Rode, they're too big. Surely, you know, this product is on its, what, third generation now? Sort it out. It's subjective, of course, but I would put money on Tascam being the best sounding of this group. I know the Tascam preamps and AD conversion is very good. The lav is also exceptional quality. It's also not wireless. So it's just simply a cleaner, more robust signal path in comparison, in my opinion. Next on to my pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Firstly, this sounds unbelievable. You've been hearing it throughout the video. I was frankly shocked of how good this sounds. This comes with a great lav. You could pay just as much for a quality lav mic just on its own. Then we have the reliability factor, which can't be understated. This is such a dependable audio solution for all of the reasons I mentioned. 32-bit float is unbelievable. Again, I recommend my video called what is 32-bit float and you'll see. Using mini SDs it has expandable media and this is great if say you're doing multiple days of shooting and perhaps you're not able to dump your audio files in between shoots. This is stunning value and personally I'd rather get multiple versions of the DR10L Pro rather than multi-channel wireless alternatives. And then there's the battery life. Even with rechargeable batteries, it has a really long battery life and it's just something that I don't really ever have to worry about. More reasons why this is just a really dependable unit. And onto the cons, and it doesn't have any kind of noise cancelling, but as I mentioned, I cannot stand the sound of noise cancelling of any kind, so I would never use it. It's not wireless, but it really doesn't need to be. There is an optional Bluetooth dongle which allows you to link five units and control them via an app and even synchronize the timecode with Atomos products. I still say off-camera audio is better 99% of the time. And then the only actual con, it doesn't come with any kind of case, but really I recommend something like those Tenba wraps, they're really cool. Finally to my opinion, and I love it, you know I love it already, I said it at the top of the video, and it's just a product that has so many strengths and no real glaring weaknesses and at just such a relatively low price. For me, it gets completely full marks for sound quality, for reliability and for value. In fact, you could even consider this just a really good quality lav system that comes with a free portable recorder. It's probably a seven out of 10, if we're being honest, for convenience. And that's only because I think some people will definitely prefer something that just records straight to their camera or straight to a phone, that kind of thing, and won't want the extra step of syncing up audio in post. But you know what? It's 
absolutely worth it. Anyway, that's all for now. I'm not sure why I've hidden this until now. Um, yeah, this is now, I would say, my benchmark for lav systems. And I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. What did I miss? Do you agree? Which system shall I check out next? Definitely let me know. I'm down in the comments as much as I can. I'll see you down there. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio, of which Google's algorithm has recommended this video for you to watch next. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better videos. See you.